before we get started, y'all gotta tell me what you're drinking. Is it gonna be tequila? Is it gonna be rum? Is it gonna be whiskey or bourbon? Or you just want a round of waters? Because I'm trying to figure out what we gonna put on our tab for us folks that sit at the end of the bar, if you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on, baby? It, this was the long-awaited press conference that we had been waiting for. This had been highly anticipated, especially by me, uh, especially when they announced yesterday that it was going to be moved from 2.30 to 3.30. I was just thinking, all right, well, th there's got to be something of significance that is said at that press. It can't just be the normal uh, post-game Monday press. N there's no way. But it was just the normal every day or every week Monday post-game pressing. John Harbaugh spoke, uh, he spoke about Lamar, spoke about Greg Roman, spoke about Clayus Campbell, Marcus Peters, um, but everything was very vague, everything was very, y'all know how it goes, anyway, let, let's just get into it and we'll talk about it. I think it was Jeff uh, from Jump asked about Lamar Jackson, is Lamar Jackson going to be returning this week? And like, if I would have asked y'all, what's Harbaugh going to say to that question? Y'all would already know the answer. Because y'all are smart. Y'all know John Harbaugh. Y'all know how he responds to the injury questions. So when he answered the way that he did, it was no surprise. I don't think anybody should have been surprised by it either. Um, he said that he knew somebody was going to ask about Lamar. He said that it isn't the time to put info out there about injuries just for competitive purposes. Okay. Cool. So uh, you got a game on Saturday. Falcons. Yeah, you want Falcons to act like they preparing for both Lamar and Tyler Huntley. Uh, Lamar is expected to be back at practice this week. We'll see. We won't know till tomorrow. Um, or actually, no, don't they have the walkthrough practice? I think they have a walkthrough today, as a matter of No, today's Monday. I'm tripping. I forgot that we played on Saturday, not Sunday. All right, so tomorrow they have the walkthrough. Then on Wednesday they will have the actual practice. So we, we'll start knowing tomorrow whether Lamar is going to play. We'll, we'll start knowing a little bit whether Lamar is going to play or not. Wednesday will be the real story. Then, of course, Thursday and Friday. But anyway. Um, he was asked about them running the ball. Now, Harb said that they weren't opposed to running the ball, but they ended up passing it more. And he said that with around 10 minutes left, they were looking at how many possessions they could get. And he acknowledged that they were running it good. And he did the, uh, you know, the, the Harbaugh thing that he does, man, where he, um, the hindsight is twenty twenty, but but he says it in like a, in a hardball way, man. Hardball is just hardball, man. That's who he is, man. We we know who he is. We've been watching this guy for what? Would have been fourteen years, I think, two thousand eight. Yeah, fourteen years. So um, but he still keeps it interesting. He really does, man. He really does. So shout out to him for that. Um, now I think it was Cordell uh, Woodland that asked about some potential tweaks uh, with the coaching staff and and um. What gives you confidence that Greg Roman is the guy that can get the passing game where it needs to be? Uh, Harb said that he has all the confidence in the world in the guys that they have. Said all of their coaches, including Greg, are capable of getting it done and scheming it up. He said they, uh, they look at all the football X's and old stuff and the volume of what they do. He said they look at all of that stuff. All of them. All of it. Um, then... Somebody asked about the, the potential uh, changing of roles with coaches. Uh, and he said they're not getting into all of that. Uh, and he said that you guys and the fans can talk about all of that. Y'all can, can have those conversations. So really that would be us, all of us. We can have those conversations. But he said they're not getting into all of that. All right, cool. All right, I'm all cool, man. We're going to still talk about it, though. Uh, he said, but we're together. We're a team with a bunch of people that are really good at what they do. And he was like, what, what was it, Bill Belichick that said uh, we're on to Atlanta? And he said we want to be great. Uh, he said it's December football. It's crazy. It's not always going to be smooth sailing. It's tough. You're not always going to have good days. We obviously hope to have more good days than bad days, but it's not always going to be pretty. Um, and, and that's what he mentioned the, the, that that's all the talk at the end of the bar. That's that's where we sit now. We are on the end of the bar. It's fans and stuff, media and all that. We at the end of the bar. Harbaugh and the people that's playing, the players, the coach, they at the beginning. But we are, we over at the end now. Um, he was also asked about Tyus Bowser's Instagram story. Um, and, and you know what? Real quick, shout out to the media at, that was at this presser today because they asked the questions like because you can't like. You're not going to go to a presser because I know nobody wants to get their credentials revoked. Um, but you're not going to go to a presser and be like, hey, are you guys going to fire Greg Roman? What we no, you're not going to ask that. Nobody's nobody's going to ask that. 
Um, but the way that they worded everything and they asked things, I always appreciate that because you you can ask like some people think that you cannot do it, but you can ask tough questions respectfully. You can do that. Like on here, we don't mind having those tough conversations about whatever it is, but it's always done with respect. Because these are people at the end of the day, these are human beings at the end of the day. And we all know that it's, it's never anything personal, ever. This is just strictly business. So you can do that stuff with respect, and I appreciated the fact that they were doing it. So shout out to the, uh, the media guys that were there, and girls. So... He was asked about Tyus Bowser's Instagram story, and Hobbs said that he talked to Tyus about it, and he talked to Greg Roman about it too, and he kept telling them, "Hey, you, you, you gotta, you, you should ask Tyus Bowser about that." He said Tyus Bowser talked to Greg Roman too. Um, he said that when stuff like that happens, you find out that it's not much there. And when he said that, I was like, "Hey, Hobbs, look, got a lot of love for you, but right there, I do not believe you. I don't believe you." Now I, I get it as a head coach, you're the leader. And Harbaugh is obviously a leader of men, right? Um, you don't want to do anything, especially say anything publicly, that could make it look like you have dysfunction. Because, I mean, that, that does show dysfunction, him showing those papers. It was not a small thing at all, especially coming from one Tyus Bowser, who, like I mentioned in the video about that, that's somebody who the Ravens absolutely love. They love, 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 love Tyus Bowser. So for him to do that, again, he's smart. He's smart. He knows what social media is. He knows how these things get buzzing like crazy, especially something like that. Given the situation of what just happened the, in the game, like, yeah, he knew what he was doing. We know what he, we knew he knew what he was doing. Harbaugh knows he knew what he was doing. But anyway, um, he said that he could go on a social media rant, and he said that he doesn't live there as far as on social media. Um, and he said he doesn't know why anyone lives on social media. He said we have great guys that have good intentions. And he also said he was, oh, somebody asked him about security. <laughs> they, they, they were like, oh, they, asked, <laughs> they asked him about the, like, the security footage. And he said that, uh, he said, I'm not security. I'm not security. So, uh, so you, you know, when Harbaugh over something, when he don't want to talk about it, he's he going to see it. He's going to let you know, not only with his words, but with his face too. And just with his whole vibe. Um... He talked about, I mean, he didn't really talk about Marcus Peters and Calais Campbell. He did bring them up. Somebody asked about them, and he was like, that's the same thing with Lamar Jackson. I'm not getting into that. Uh, he talked about being behind sort of a barricade, uh, sort of to, to avoid, ask, avoid answering questions about injuries. So, I mean, that's, that's normal stuff. Y'all know how that goes. Uh, he was asked about David Ajabo. Um, was there a checkpoint that David Ajabo uh, hit or had to hit to get on the field? And Harp said it was really just circumstances. Said they were down a DB, so Ajabo had an opportunity to be active. And he talked about that being a good problem to have because he said, you remember when we signed JPP earlier? We ain't had no outside linebackers. He had to play like 50-something snaps. And then, yeah, we all remember. Uh, but then now, like, yeah, they, they got their guys back. They got Bowser back by then, Justin Houston back, David a job. So, yeah, it, they're in a much better situation than they were in earlier. Um, he was also asked about Tyler Huntley, like what strides Tyler Huntley made. Uh, and he said, you go play by play. To sit here and give you an overall analysis of any player right now, he said it's something that he just wouldn't do. And I, don't, I think he actually said he couldn't do that right now. But it's like, really, like, how, how could you not? We well, can I know if we can, then you definitely can. Because we only see the players on Sundays and Saturdays, too. You see them every day. So you could definitely give an analysis. But I don't, I don't mind it. I don't, I understand. I don't, I, I'm, I hope I'm making me, he's making my mind go crazy right now. I understand why you wouldn't do that. So you don't put him on the spot. You don't throw him under the bus just in case he does have to be your starter again. You want him having all the confidence in the world. And I'm sure even if he gave an analysis of Tyler Huntley up, th up to this point in the season, even though it's just been a couple of games with Huntley, it's been Broncos, Steelers, and then uh, the Browns, I'm sure he would uh, say some positive stuff about him to, to, to really build him up, talk about how he's leading the team and whatnot, so that he, he, he expects him to be even better. Um, but I, I can understand just staying away from it just to be safe. So that was cool. But yeah, man, I, I just went into this press conference. I, I wasn't sure exactly what I expected, but it just, well, I expected something again with it being a little bit later and whatnot, especially with how the game went. But 
just really didn't get anything. Just a lot of the same old stuff. So, again, we talked about this before the season even started. Uh, we did a video. Um, you can go look for the video, too. It's, uh, it's called Ravens Accountability and something. Ravens AA Accountability and something. I forgot what else it was called. But in that video, we went into detail with everybody how they they all need to be held accountable this season because i know last season even though i didn't think they should have but last season everybody got a pass everybody got a pass well except wink but everybody got a pass but i was saying that this year no matter what people need to be held accountable so i said the top steve Ashadi. Then goes down, Eric DaCosta, then goes down, John Harbaugh, then goes down, Greg Roman, Mike McDonald, any whoever the coordinators are going to be, because I, I think th I think we still had Wink when I made that video, but either way, uh, then we talked about the players too, we talked about LeBar Jackson, talked about the offensive line, receivers, all that stuff, everybody needed to be held accountable, um, you're going to continue to roll with the staff that you got, and while it is, it's, it's kind it's like, Surprising and not surprising all at the same time that nothing happened today. Um, but if you're going to roll with the guys that you got, it's on you. It's on you. We've continued to have the conversation on here. Um, and it, it, it's funny because it, it, it's funny hearing people finally realize what's going on. Finally see what's going on. For us and a lot of people, it didn't take losing to the Browns with a backup quarterback to see some underlying issues with these Baltimore Ravens. It didn't take that. We've been talking about this for a long time, for years, as a matter of fact. Um, but yeah, if Greg Roman, yeah, Greg Roman has his issues and whatnot, but it's much deeper than Greg Roman. It's been funny seeing people who would always say, oh, pretty much that the Ravens can do no wrong. Every single move that they make is right. Every single transaction that they make is right. Every hire, fire, sign, cut, trade, draft, everything. Everything that the Baltimore Ravens do is right. They are always spot on. They don't need this. They don't need that. They made a good job getting this. They made a great job getting that. It's funny. We see a lot of those same people. Now they've done a, a complete 180. Turn around. Complete 180. And I, I have seen, and I've seen the, the biggest, biggest defenders of everything that the Ravens do. I've seen even them get fed up. Even them. And it's been interesting to see because for, for, for some people, I feel like it is, they are genuinely actually fed up with some stuff. Um, other people, I feel like they just sort of going with the flow. They're like, oh, okay, well, everybody getting fed up. You know what? I'm, I'm going to say I'm fed up too. So it is what it is, though. But um, yeah, man, we'll we'll, we'll see. If if you're gonna ride with the guys that you got now, if you're gonna stick with your guys that you got now, all right, cool. You sticking with them? It's on you. You gotta make sure you you get the best out of them. You gotta make sure that <laughs> like you you maximize uh, the rest of this season because this is big. It, it, it's this season right now is just so huge and. I felt like from jump, like the Ravens mishandled some stuff. I was like, all right, cool. That was in the past. And they did mishandle some things. But they're at this point now. They're 9-5. and five, So you got a good record. Um, it, right now, it's really not going to take much for you to get into the playoffs. You win two out of the next three games, you're in. You could win one out of the next three games and get in with a little bit of help here and there. But you win two out of the next three, you're straight. You win these next three, you're definitely good. You're, you're, you're great, actually. So the Ravens, they don't need much help to get in. Actually, they don't need any. They could get in after this. If, if they beat the Falcons this Saturday, they could get in with a little bit of help, depending on how the Thursday night game goes and I think one other game. But bottom line, as it has been, usually it happens like this every year, where the Ravens control their own destiny. The Ravens are in control of what goes on moving forward. Ravens, they, they can, if they just take care of their own business, then they'll be good to go. And you know what's crazy? Is that if just, I think maybe one, but definitely if just two of those games, if they would have just closed out two more of those games that they lost, they'd be in the playoffs already. They'd already have a spot. If they 
they just closed out two more of those games. They already have a spot. It's crazy, right? This team, this, this Baltimore Ravens team. So the season is not over by any means. Um, I know a lot of people got like low expectations and low hopes for the season, which I can understand why. Um, I'm obviously still hoping for the best, hoping that these Ravens surprise me. I said it before the season started, and it didn't change during the season. Um, I said before the season started, I, I did not see a Super Bowl from these Baltimore Ravens. I, I just really didn't. Um, didn't see a Super Bowl from the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, I would hope that they get there. I obviously hope to be wrong about that for sure. But I just didn't see it. Um, and throughout this season, I I, I still don't. But I, 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 I would love I would love, I would love to be so wrong about that. That would be my favorite thing to be wrong about. And I could be wrong about a lot of stuff, as y'all know. But that would be my favorite thing uh, to be wrong about. It would be them getting to the Super Bowl. So I know I've been seeing a lot of fans talk about which team they want to play in the playoffs. Is it the Titans or scared of the Jaguars? Is it the Bills, Chiefs, the uh, uh, Dolphins? I've been seeing so much of that, um, which is cool. It's fun. Me, anybody. I just want Ravens to get in there. Because, say for instance, because I know some people, oh, well, I don't want to play this team in the first round. I don't want to play that team in the first round. Me, I'm like, All right, hey, if Ravens deserve to be in there, whoever they go up against, they're they going to show up. If they deserve to be in there And whoever they go against If they don't deserve to be in there They're going to get bounced That's it And you can only avoid Playing this top team for so long You can only avoid playing them for a week really And I mean even if you avoid playing a top team for a week You still got a playoff team that you're going up against So they still going to bring it Regardless of who it is Because they in the playoffs too <laughs> It ain't just the Ravens that will be in the play. It'll be that other team too And they got a goal that they trying to accomplish as well So I mean, I know a lot of fans, oh, yeah, I don't want to play the, uh, no. I want Ravens to play whoever, whoever, because eventually you're going to have to play whoever anyway if you advance far enough. So, anyway, um, that's that, man. That's that. Uh, I love y'all. I, I appreciate y'all. Always appreciate y'all listening so much. Thank you very, 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 very much for that. Um <laughs> You know what, I, I was thinking before this, we about to get out of here in a minute, but I was thinking before this press conference started, I was like, all right, maybe we'll, um, we'll get one of those, uh, maybe we'll get one of those uh, Raven statements before this presser, you know, sort of like the, uh, the not the Greg Roman thing, the, um, oh, what's it called? The Wing Martindale, I could, I could not think of his name. The Wing Martindale, they had uh, issued a statement, and it, it came out of nowhere. I forgot what I was doing when that statement came across my phone, but I thought we were going to end up getting one of those before this press conference. Saying, oh, the Ravens have decided to blah, 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 blah. And then Harbaugh comes speaking, then he'll say it before he start taking, but yeah, it just obviously didn't go that way. But shout out to Kevin Zeitler making a Pro Bowl. 